Hey, good morning. Good morning, rising shiners. We are up, ready. Y'all are on it. I am so glad that we are in this thing together. Amen. It's Monday. Marvelous Monday. Magnificent Monday, right? Mana Monday. Hey, good morning, Yvette, Catherine, Miss Kathy, Jojo, and Avia. Good morning. So we are here this morning, as y'all know, to have our 30 minutes before the devotional to, to pray and to just get in the presence of God. And this morning, our focus is going to be on making room, making room for God. Um, he woke me up this morning. I actually had a dream and I almost dismissed it, you know, but then something stood out in the dream and I'll share that with you as I go through the notes for this morning. But again, where our focus is going to be on making room. And the first thing um, that he gave me was that we need to purge. We need to purge in order to make room. Some of us have, um, there's a literal purging, right? There's just clutter everywhere. There's, there's rooms in our house that are just filled with stuff. And we need to purge. We need to make room for God. We need to make room for the new strategies that we are even seeking from him, right? There's so much going on in our minds that we need to purge. Some of us are dealing with hard hearts and, and other types of sin, and we need to purge. So he said there's a there's um, three types of purging. There's an individual purging, there's a corporate purging, and then there's a purging of our hearts. And so for individual purging, we're going to be using Psalm 51 and 7. And that reads, it says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And we know that hyssop is a specific type of herb type of cleanser, right? And it says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. That purging is dealing with the sin, right? That purging is a reminder to us that every time before we can even enter the presence of God, we have to enter in a, with a place of repentance, um, with cleansing our heart. So we need to ask the Lord to purge us. In other words, we need to ask the Lord to forgive us, right? But we can take confidence and take hope in knowing that once we ask, he's going to do it based according to 1 John 1 and 9, right? He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins when we confess them to him, right? And then what does he do? And then he cleanses us of all unrighteousness. But today we're looking at purging and that individual purging, um, also deals with whatever sin we may be um, harboring and also a literal purging. So I want you guys to take time today to even look at your home, look at your space, look at your office. Um, just to use me as an example, I had to create a space for me to work from home. Um, my husband and I started out sharing an office and then I, I kind of got booted out and I was just working from the uh, the island, kitchen island. This is before the pandemic. So it, it wasn't as bad because I wasn't there all day long. But but once, um, even right before the pandemic, the Lord showed me how I could create space in our basement. And I've created a space, even those of you who have been following me from the beginning of doing this devotional, I actually started in our um, little storage area in the back, um, right behind where I have my office set. But Nevertheless, what I'm saying is we have to make room. We have to create space for God to come in. We have to create an environment for his presence, right? And so then there's also a, a corporate purging that we're going to be praying about. And um, the scripture reference for that is Isaiah 4 and 4. And I find it interesting that he took me to this scripture um, primarily because the Rise and Shine group is predominantly women. I know we have um, a couple of guys that at least one guy that, that uh, Mr. Tim usually comments. There may be some other guys that watch the replay and I'm just not aware. But um, this scripture, Isaiah 4 and 4, it says, when the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and purge the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. You know, we've been called to 
um, deliver a nation. And there is there's some blood that's on the hands of our nations, and and there's some filth that is that is um, looming in our nations. And God is going to um, use us in, to 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 bring about a purging of that, and to bring about a washing away of the of the filth. You know, in that Jerusalem, right? Remember, um, Jesus said that we would be witnesses um, from Jerusalem, Judea, and to the othermost parts of the earth. That Jerusalem is not only a literal Jerusalem, but what is your Jerusalem? What is your inner circle? What is your area, your sphere of influence? Right? There's there's some purging that needs to take place, but <clears throat> Excuse me, but as the body of Christ, there's a corporate purging that needs to take place. Um, where backbiting has 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 happened, where divisiveness has happened, right? And and God is saying He's going to purge us from from all of that, and even from the from the. Um, as a nation, we need to pray for that purging so we can get to the next level in Him. Amen. And then the. Um, Third area of purging is actual our hearts and even the hearts of those in leadership. Ezekiel 36 and 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of of flesh. Some of us, our hearts have been hardened. Um, the, the legal system, the governmental systems, there's hardened hearts there. So we want to pray for, for God to, to give us a new heart, to give um, new hearts where, where hearts are needed, to perform heart transplants, right? Divine heart transplants. So that's the first area that he um, gave me as it pertains to making room. And the reason we need to make room is because we need to have the capacity for what he's about to pour out and pour into us, right? And the word he gave me for capacity was the Rehoboth, and which means a large space. In Genesis 26 and 22, it says, and he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth because he said, for now, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. So just to give you some history on that scripture, there was battle going on about the land and wherever they would dig the wells, somebody would come in and stop up the wells. But finally, they were able to get their own space and their own land and, and, and name the place Rehoboth, right? Because the people didn't bother them. There was no argument over it. So you may have been trying to do some things and have been met with resistance, right? But God is saying now, as we purge, he is going to bring us into our Rehoboth. Nobody is going to come up against us and we are going to be fruitful in that land that he brings us into, right? Whether it's business, marital, on your job, relational, there, there's a fruitfulness that is about to take place. Why? Because the, 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 the capacity, we will have the capacity to withstand and receive what God is going to do. We're going to have the consistent flow of water, the water of his word, right? They were digging wells and, and others were coming to stop them up. Your wells will no longer be stopped up, but your wells are being opened so that they can release the water out as you need it, right? And will cause you to be fruitful, right? You can't, you can't grow anything in a dry ground, right? Like in the desert. What grows in the desert? Nothing but cacti. But with 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 us, he's saying our, our wells will no longer be stopped up and we will be fruitful. The seeds that we sow into the land that he tells us to sow in, everything is going to be fruitful. Hallelujah. And so God is saying, first, we need to purge individually, corporately, cleanse our hearts. And that is going to make room. That is going to give us the capacity to receive what it is that we need to receive in order to be fruitful. Amen. Um, Jonathan Reynolds has a song that, um, 
that's called Make Room. And he talks about laying, you know, getting rid of everything that would um, hinder him having that experience and that encounter in the presence of God. Remember the whole focus God has is, is reminded us of this fast is to make room, is to be in his presence, to experience his presence. And I hope if you haven't had a chance, I shared um, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt's message from yesterday, the preservation of the presence, powerful message, so in line with what God is, is, is dealing with us and teaching us about his presence. So I want to encourage you to go back and watch that as well. Now, the last point um, that God gave me for today is in my dream, I um, several of my family members and uh, a young lady that I know were in this dream. It just really didn't make sense why I was dreaming because I'm not a dreamer, right? My mother was in it. My sister was in it. My mother referenced my dad. Um, and as I said, there was another young lady that I knew from a, a long time ago who was in the dream. But what's significant about this dream um, my mother, we were outside. The young lady that I knew, she had offered to take me to the post office um, to drop off some packages. I, I, I don't know now if it was for my store or whatever it was, but she had offered to take me to the post office. And so we were outside and then this car pulls up and this lady, you know, says, hey, Miss Weaver, that's my mother. And, you know, my mother's looking because she doesn't really recognize her. And she said, oh, I'm so-and-so on the on Ciferous's um, is my boyfriend. Now, at the point that that name was spoken, right, in my dream, I'm just looking, I'm thinking that's a weird name. But when I woke up, God said, you know that name. It's a name that's in the Bible, right? And so, of course, I had to go and, and, and research the name. This name, Onesiphorus, it means bringing profit or useful. God is saying to us, he is bringing profit. He is bringing uh, financial profit, spiritual profit. He is bringing those things and even those people that will be useful for us, right? And, and he was a Christian referred to by Paul. And so the scriptures, um, there's a couple of scriptures that where he's mentioned. The first is 2 Timothy 1, 16 through 18. And that says, the Lord grant mercy to the house household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Paul was in prison, but when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously and found me. God is saying, prophet is going to seek us out. God is saying um, destiny helpers are going to seek us out. Verse um. 18, it says, the Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. So God is sending us destiny helpers, people that will be useful for us. And he is sending us prophet. Prophet is going to seek us out. Destiny helpers are going to seek us out. And we're going to pray this, this scripture in prayer for our, our Onesiphorus to, to be um, revealed to us, that we will recognize him when he comes, right? And then the next scripture reference for, for him is found in 2 Timothy 4, 19, and it simply says, greet Prisca, Aquila, and the household of Onesiphorus. In other words, God is saying to us, begin to declare that prophet is seeking you out. Begin to declare that prophet will find you. Begin to declare that your destiny helpers are coming, right? It says the whole household of profit, the whole household of usefulness, right? So we're going to we're going to pray um, for the for um, the the spirit of Onesiphorus to um, manifest in our lives, so to bring about um, what it is that we need um, to to fulfill the plans and purposes that God has for our life. Amen. Um, the last thing um, that God said we're going to pray for is we're going to pray for family. So um, if you guys have, you know, specific family um, members or people close to you that you know you want prayer for, you can drop their names in the comments. Um, you guys are, must be really listening good. Amen. There's no comments. Um, but um, we're, this, this is our prayer focus today. So real quick, um, 
It's a quarter to six. We're going to pray for the next 15 minutes. But our focus is going to be on making room for God, using um, the scriptures that he gave us this morning and believing God um, for the purging and the cleansing, not only individually and corporately and of our hearts, but then we will have the capacity. We will have the room. We will have the large space that we need to, to even receive his presence and then receive um, um, the things that he has for us to receive in order for us to be fruitful. And then on top of that, there's going to be profit. Uh, profit is going to be brought. Destiny helpers will be will be received in Jesus name. And then our family, we're going to cover our family in prayer. Amen. So as I'm praying, you guys also be praying. Um, if you again, if you pray in tongues, definitely pray in tongues. Um, if you don't, that's fine. Pray in understanding, and we're gonna pray together. Um, when we get to the family portion, um, if you want, you can drop names in, and I'll include them in the prayer as well. Father, we thank you, God. We bless you. We thank you for bringing us to day three of this time of prayer and fasting. We thank you, Lord God, for um, just the opportunity to come into your presence, God. We welcome your presence. We thank you for teaching us about the importance of your presence, God. We thank you for reminding us that it is a choice that we enter your presence and that we make room for your presence. So God, on today, we start out first coming again with a heart of repentance, God, asking that you would search us, O oh God, and know our hearts. Try us, O oh Lord, and test our thoughts. And if there's any wicked way within us, God, that you would lead us in your way everlasting. Father, we want to stand before you with clean hands and a pure heart. So we ask right now, God, that you would purge us with hyssop, that you would cause us to be um, white as snow, Lord God. In the the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you would purge us, that we would be clean and that you would wash us, Lord God, that we would we would no longer even have a remnant of, 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 of sin about us, God. We pray individually that you would purge us, Lord God, but even corporately as the body of Christ. Father, let there be a purging, let there be a cleansing, Lord God. Even as you said in Isaiah 4 and 4, Lord God, that you washed away the filth from the daughters of Zion, which represents your church. Father, wash away the filth, the filth of divisiveness, the filth of backbiting, the filth of a lack of integrity, the filth of, of religion, of vice relationship, God. Wash away the filth from the body of Christ, Lord God, and bring us to a place where we can be clean before you and where we can walk in unity, oh God. Father, purge the blood of Jerusalem from our midst, God, where, where war has, has been um, uh, taken place in our Jerusalems, God, in our nation, even in our personal lives, Lord God. Purge away the blood that has been shed, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, the blood of broken hearts, the blood of negative words that have been spoken, that have scarred and have killed and have murdered in the name of Jesus, the blood of racism in our world, Father, in the name of Jesus, purge it, God, that we may rise as a nation, that we will truly be even as the Constitution says, one nation under God. Father, we thank you that as you are using us in this time of prayer and fasting, you are purging and you are cleansing us, that we will be able to be one, one voice, one spirit, one mind in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our hearts individually and corporately, Lord God, that you would take the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. You said you would take us, you would give us a new heart and put a new spirit within us, God, creating us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us, God. Father, give us the, a, a, a heart of flesh, a heart that is pliable in your hands, a heart that is not resistant to your word and, and, to, and to your correction, Lord God, but a heart that is pliable in your hands that we may, we may go and do all that you have called us to do. We pray, Lord God, that you would take the heart of the king and that you would turn it, Lord God, that it will be turned first towards you and then towards the people, oh God, for those in leadership well, that you would take their hearts, Lord God, the heart of stone, the heart that has been hardened because of greed and, and selfishness, God, and that you would release the heart of compassion, Lord God, compassion for your people in the name of Jesus, even in our personal lives, Lord God, where their hearts have been, been turned to stone in our families, in our marriages, Lord God, even in our friendships 
friendships, Lord God. Father, that the spirit of forgiveness would prevail, that the heart of stone would be turned to the heart of flesh, that relationships can be restored, that marriages can be restored, that reconciliation can take place between mother and daughter and father and, and, and son and, and parents and siblings and all, Lord God, that the that the ministry of reconciliation will prevail even amongst the body of Christ where there has been a breach where there has been a severing of relationships God ordained relationships we release your power even now to restore and to reconcile and to repair the breach in the name of Jesus and Father we thank you for our onesiphorous God we thank you that you are bringing profit oh God we thank you that prophet is seeking us out. We thank you for our destiny helpers that are seeking us out, God. We thank you that as we apply your strategy, Lord God, your, your strategy of getting knowledge and understanding and, and, and applying wisdom, as we apply that strategy to every area of our lives, Lord God, that you are bringing profit. You are bringing the destiny helpers that will cause us to enter into our large place. We thank you, Lord God, for the Rehoboth that you have, have set us side for us. And we thank you, Lord God, that our destiny helpers are there, that we do not have to do this thing alone that you are sending those that are like-minded, like spirit in the name of Jesus. We thank you now, Lord God. We even greet them. We declare that prophet is, is finding me, that prophet is seeking me out, that my destiny helpers are, are seeking me out. We declare it out of our mouth that it may be established. We greet them, God. And Father, we thank you that we will receive the, the prophet. We will receive the spiritual prophet, the financial prophet, the relationship prophet, God. We will receive it in the manner in which you choose to give it. We thank you, God, that our eyes, Lord God, our spiritual eyes are open, that we will not miss it because we will be consistently in your presence, God, that we will, we will see when you are sending the prophet. We will see when you are sending the destiny helpers, Lord God. We will know when they are, 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 are seeking us out, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you even for the spirit of discernment, Lord God that we will recognize the counterfeit, that we will recognize the counterfeit, Lord God, and we will not fall um, prey to the counterfeit, but we will recognize the one and that, that you are sending or the ones that you are sending in the, in the method that you are sending, right, God? You are sending, you are bringing profit. We thank you for the creativity of new ideas, that will bring profit, not only that will provide ministry, but that will provide profit, that we can continue to finance your kingdom, that we can continue to be the financiers of your gospel in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord God, we pray for our family. We pray for our family members. We release the blood of Jesus over them, Lord God, that you would continue to cover, to shield and protect them, God. I specifically pray for, for my family, for my parents, my sisters, my, my nieces, my, my, my in-laws, Lord God. I pray for those that um, are yet to come to know you, oh God. I decree and declare household salvation shall prevail in our families, Lord God. Every household represented here. I pray for their families, Lord God, where the spirit of infirmity is, is present. I release your healing power and your healing virtue now where salvation is needed. I decree and declare household salvation for our families, God. I specifically lift up our sister Dale, Lord God, a friend of ours, Lord God, who just lost her brother on yesterday. I release the, the power and the comfort of the Holy Spirit into her and her family, Lord God. I use her as a point of contact for others who may be grieving, Father, just even now that you would release the comfort of the Holy Spirit, that they would feel and have a tangible encounter of your presence and your comfort during this time in the name of Jesus. I pray for uh, my sister Robin, who we're coming up on the fifth anniversary of the loss of her husband, Steve, Lord God. I pray for her. I pray for my husband, AJ, even for myself, God, as we as we reflect on the goodness of a, of a, of, of a man uh, who, who loved with, 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 
with very with unconditional love who was the was the best big brother a sister could have we thank you lord god just for allowing us to share in his life but i pray lord god for for his family for robin for aj lord god that you would comfort them that as 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 um they reflect on on um on the fact that it's been five years that you would extend grace even to us god that you would give us the grace that we need to 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 mourn with joy that we would exchange, Lord God, the spirit of heaviness for the garment of praise. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you will do it. Thank you, Lord God, that you will ease the, the pain, that you will dry the tears in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and we praise you again. We thank you, God, that you are helping us to make room. We thank you, God, that literally and spiritually, we are making room for you, that your presence, that we will forever be in your presence, God, for truly in your presence, there is pre um, pleasure evermore. There is the fullness of joy. We thank you, God, that in your presence is not just a little joy, but there's the fullness of joy, the, the greatest amount of joy that we could ever imagine. So God, we thank you and we welcome you into this place even now, even as we prepare to go into the devotional, God, for today. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, the one who will lead and guide us into all truth um, through your devotional on today. And even even in our private time, we thank you that you will continue to speak. We thank you for the wisdom and the revelation and the insight that you will provide to us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to those who may have just recently joined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and let me just pray because I was thinking there weren't any comments, but I had my, my notes up and I didn't see it. So we're going to continue to pray for what you guys have, have um, put in here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up um, these prayer requests here. We lift up Miss Moore, Lord God. We lift up Bobby Johnson Jr. We lift up um, the the Rutledge siblings, yes, God, JoJo siblings, Lord God. We lift up Tara Williams, Lord God. We lift up Eddie, Norman, um, Eric, Lord God. We lift up Neil and Janae, Lord God. Yes, God. We lift up ministers everywhere. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus. We lift up the Long, the Ellis, the Scots, and, and, and all of those households related to Reverend Stephanie. We lift up... Um, Y'all see my glasses and they're coming soon. She does healing. Yes. From COVID-19. Hallelujah. We lift up Deacon Staggers, children everywhere who need love and protection. Let's, yes, God, we specifically just, we lift up all these names. Some of them um, have specific requests. We, we pray for healing, Lord God. We pray for marital restoration. We pray for household salvation, Lord God. We we thank you, God, that, that you know their names and you know their exact needs and we're sending exactly what they need, your, your healing virtue. We thank you that the heart, Angels are hearkening to the voice of your word to go and perform and do that which you have sent it to do and to prosper in that thing. We thank you, Lord God, that, that children, Lord God, that, that need love, Lord God, that you will send the, the, the destiny helpers to love on them, God. Those that are in foster homes um, and, and waiting to be adopted, that you would send parents of, of that, will, that will love them, that are not just in it for the money, but are truly there to love and nurture in the name of Jesus. We pray for the ministers, Lord God, those who are or have been assigned to share your gospel, Lord God. Help us to remain pure. Help us to remain studious of your word. Help us, Lord God, to just continually to remain in your presence, that we will bring forth the healing and the deliverance that is needed in such a time as this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Amen. 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 
All right, guys, we're going to jump into our devotional. Well, real quick, Miss Kathy, um, I want to say the lady's name we prayed for a few weeks ago. Her name was Marva. If you could just give us an update on her. Um, she's been on my mind and I've just been wondering how um, she's been doing. Um, we prayed for her healing and I, I'm believing that all is well with her as, as well. Amen. All right, guys, it is 6 a.m. Let's get started with our devotional. I, I pray that um, what we covered this morning was beneficial to you guys um, about making room. God is, God is really, he's really serious about us um, getting into his presence and making room for him so that we can close out this, this time of reset in the right way. Amen. All right. Um, our topic today is, whew, thank you, Lord. Our topic today is the canvas of life, the canvas of life. And so we're going to look at the devotional today. Today is um, the 27th. And um, the devotional says, think of yourself today as an artist. You're a painter preparing your canvas and brushes for a monumental invasion of color, shape, and movement, creating what the world has never seen. Think of yourself as possessing skills to amaze with your original, <clears throat> excuse me, with your original expressions of love and fearlessness. Every stroke you make on your canvas of life is yours and yours alone. You're the one who chooses the colors, the viscosity, and the movements of the brush. It's you making the art, nobody else. Are you glad for the artist I made you to be? Are you thankful today that you're one of a kind and original and that what you bring to the world is wonderful? Wow. <clears throat> God says he's made us an artist. He wants us to think of ourselves as an artist, right? I know one thing. I am, you know, I'm I'm not truly an artist, right? But if God says for me to think of myself as an artist, I'm going to uh, reframe my thinking, right? That um and he's reminding us that we choose we choose the beauty of our life, right? Art is considered a form of beauty, an expression of beauty, right? It's an expression of love. It's an expression of, of what's going on. And we choose what goes on our canvas of life, right? He says, you choose it. Think of yourself today as an artist. You're a painter, right? So um, when my husband was having the basement redone, right, he chose the color, you know, that he wanted painted on the walls, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. When, you, when you're having some work done in the house and, and there's some painting that, that needs to be done, you choose the color based on what, what you want to experience in that room, right? Or the tone or the atmosphere that you want to create. What are you painting on your canvas of life today? Excuse me. <clears throat> what are you painting on your canvas of life today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Kathy. She put her um, update in here. She's responding. She's alert and um, not yet speaking. She was going to a facility, but she will go home to receive her therapy. Okay. Yes, we will continue to pray for her. I'm just believing God is going to do something <clears throat> marvelous and miraculous with her. So thank you for sharing um, that update. All right. So the canvas of life, what are you painting on your canvas of life? What color are you choosing? What viscosity are you choosing for your canvas of life? It says every stroke you make on your canvas of life is yours, meaning you have to own it. We can't blame anybody else if the color didn't turn out right. Why? Because we chose it. We can't blame anybody else if, um, if we don't like how it looks or how it turned out because we chose it. He says, every stroke you make on your canvas of life is yours and yours alone. So in other words, we need to make sure that we are choosing according to what God would have us to choose, right? Because when we, when we rely on our own senses, when we rely on our own desires, when we lean to our own understanding, right? Nine times out of 10, we're going to mess it up. 
But God is reminding us that we are in control of the canvas of our life because of the choices that we make, right? The Bible says, um, choose life or death. I, I suggest that you choose life, right? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What are you choosing to paint on your canvas? Every stroke you make on your canvas of life is yours and yours alone. You're the one who chooses the colors, the viscosity, and the movement of the brush. It's you making the art, nobody else. So you can just, you know, paint real fast or you can be um, meticulous and, and detailed about it, right? How, how are you, how are you um, painting the canvas of your life? He says, um, are you glad for the artist I made you to be? Are you thankful today that you're one of a kind and original and that what you bring to the world is wonderful? So he's reminding us to realize that he's created us, right? He's created us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are created in his image. And, and we, we are artists because artists are creators. We are artists because God himself is the ultimate creator. And because we are created in his image, we have that capacity to create. And he's just reminding us to make sure that when we go to create, we create as he would create. And how do we create? We're back to it again, guys. We, we create with what we say out of our mouth. We create with the words that we speak from our mouth, right? Um, death and life is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18 and 20, 18 and 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And I've taught you before that that Hebrew word power means yod, is yod, which means to create. We can create death or we can create life simply by what comes out of our mouth, simply by what rolls off of our tongue. And God is reminding us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And what we create, we need to make sure that we are creating it just as he would create it, that we create we create based on, on um, the word that and the promises that he has given us. Amen. All right. So let's look at some scriptures today. The first one comes from the book of Psalms 139 and verse 14, what I just quoted. It says, I will praise you. Why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Does your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, does your soul know very well that God's works are marvelous. You are a part of his works. You are marvelous. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no flaw in you. There is no error in you. Why? Because God created you, right? We get so caught up with our external appearance, right? We feel like we need to go have plastic surgery. We need bigger boobs. We need a bigger butt. We need a smaller nose. We need whatever, right? We need to get rid of the wrinkles. We need to, we need fuller lips, all this stuff. <clears throat> And what are we saying when we're doing that? What are we saying to God? That we don't, pre we don't appreciate the way that he created us. We're saying that he didn't do it right. We're saying that, that there's something wrong, that there's an error there. But God is reminding us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Every freckle that you have, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Maybe your hair isn't long and flowing, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Hallelujah. God is saying, I have created you that way. He says, I need you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey, good morning, Pastor Sandra. And so um, he's reminding us of that. If, if you haven't felt that that way, God just wants you to know, you know, when you think about it, it should bring praise to you. Um, David says, I will praise you. Why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, you are all that and a bag of chips, right? Marvelous are your works. I'm marvelous because I'm the work of God. And that my soul knows very well. How will your soul, how will your mind, your will, and your emotions know it well? You've got to meditate on the word of God. 
You got to meditate on the word that says that that um, you are a chosen generation or royal priesthood, a peculiar nation. You got to meditate on the word that says, I am complete, that we are complete in him. You got to meditate on the word that says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You got to meditate on the word that says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, right? That is how you will know, your soul will know very well the works of God. When you meditate on the word, when you chew on it, when you mull on it, excuse me, when you mull over it, when you study it, when you get it down on the inside of you, right? That's when you'll know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, the other day on um, our, our in our class, Pastor Sandra shared how growing up her father would tell her and her siblings that re to remember that nobody was smarter than them. Nobody was smarter than them. And the, the beauty of him making that statement is that he only had an eighth grade education, but he knew that nobody was smarter than him. And he instilled that in, in his children. And she shared that, you know, as she became an adult in, in, the, in the workplace and she realized why he was saying that, because there were people that worked in our office that had all kinds of degrees, but yet she was she was um, able to keep up and, and, and get promoted and do the necessary things even without the, the degrees, right? She eventually went on to get, get a degree and, and, and all of that, but she remembered that nobody was smarter than her. She was fearfully and wonderfully made. This is what God is saying to us. Don't allow anyone or anything to cause you to think any less of yourself because you are fearfully and wonderfully made because you are created in the image of God. Amen. Amen. Reverend Stephanie says the inner man must be ordained with beauty and righteousness. Exactly. Right. We always say, you know, people say beauty is skin deep or beauty comes from the inside out. Right. When you get that inner man taken care of, when, when that spirit man is taken care of, you just radiate with beauty. Right. People will, will think you are Moses because you just always have this glow upon you and they will feel they will know. OK, that's there's something different about that person. Yes, you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. And as you meditate on the word of God. As you keep the, the, the word before you, right? The Bible says to keep the word um, before you at your frontlets, right? And and I saw a demonstration of it the other day with Reverend Janice, and I'm going to share it with you guys just to, to how important it is. So, so when you keep, the frontlet was like right here. So if you were to put your hand right here in between your eyes, right, you can't see, you can't help but not see your hand, right? It, it, it's right there. It's right there. It, it's like you it, it you can't help but not see it. That's how powerful um, and God wants us to keep the word. That's how in front of us he wants us to keep the word. No matter where our eyes shift, that, that the word is always right there. That visual just really did something for me when she did that. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Sandra says, thank God that words make a difference. Decree a thing and it shall be established. That's right. Hallelujah. All right. So let's see what our next scripture is for um, this morning. It says, it, I mean, it comes from Genesis 1 and 22. Genesis 1 and 22. And it says, and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, excuse me, and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. This even goes along with um, our study this morning during our time of prayer about capacity and being fruitful, right? God is saying to us, he wants us to be fruitful. He has blessed us to be fruitful and he has sent us forth to be fruitful, not just with, with um, bearing children, but in everything that we do. Um, he has blessed us to be fruitful, right? He has given us the capacity. He has given us our Rehoboth. Our wells are no longer stopped up and the water is going to flow freely from the word of God that will cause us to be fruitful in every area of our lives. As we speak forth the word of God, we are bearing fruit. We are bearing witness of God on the inside of us. The next scripture comes from Ephesians 5 and verse 20. 
And it says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. Ooh, excuse me. Waking up a little bit earlier. Um, I need to go to bed earlier, huh? Again, Ephesians 5 and 20. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The devotional asks, are you thankful that God made you an artist? Are you thankful for how God created you? Are you thankful for the creativity that he has deposited in you? He's reminding us to always have an attitude of gratitude because it could be a whole lot worse, right? But he's saying, be thankful in all things, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we look at this in context, because... Um, it's, if, if we just read this verse, you would think it, we were supposed to be give thanks for all things. And it's not for, for all things as, as it reads here, um, because we, we know there's another scripture that tells us to give thanks in all things. Right. So we don't give thanks for for COVID. We don't give thanks for um, those negative things that happen. So we need to understand what was being said prior to this. Um, so we know the all things that we're giving thanks for. Um, verse 17, it says, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. So he's talking about the all things that we are giving thanks for is, is the understanding that we receive, the, the spiritual songs and the singing and the melody that is in our heart. That is what we are giving thanks for, right? That, that is the all things that we are giving thanks for, that we have the ability to do that, right? I just wanted to clear that up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Sandra says that she is forever grateful. Amen. Yes, we, we need to be forever grateful for all that God is doing in our life. And then our last scripture for today is actually the same as the last scripture we had on yesterday, the Colossians 3 and 10. And um, it's reminding us again about the newness of life that we are new and says and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Right. It is because of our knowledge of God who created us that we can put on the new man. Right. I'm just going to also read this one in context. Um so that we'll have it, Colossians 3 and 10. So we'll start, let's see. I'll start in, I'll, I'll, I'll start in verse five. It says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them, right? So we no longer um, practice sin, right? We are no longer considered the sons of disobedience. But even as we started this morning off with our teaching and during our time of prayer and fasting about purging, right? We have to put to death we, daily, you know, Paul says, I die daily to my flesh. We have to uh, crucify the flesh daily. We have to put to death um, those fleshly desires, those things that are not of God. And that's what this verse is reminding us here. Verse eight, it says, it's telling us who we are. But now you yourselves are to put off all these. What are we to put off? What are we to take off, right? It's, it's, uh, it's like um, Ephesians 6 tells us to put on these things we have to put off before we can put on the full armor. It says, but now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, 
blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. This is what we were praying about, that God would purge the blood um, from our from our Jerusalem, right? That God would wash the filth from the daughters of Zion. We were praying for the body of Christ and, and for our nation, right? That these things would, would, would um, be cleansed. It says, verse nine, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And then verse 10, which was our verse for today, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. Um, we've had a lot today. We've had a, a full morning, um, but I'm just blessed by how God has met us um, this morning, um, just even with the the teaching on, you know, maintaining his presence and about the focus on making sure we make room for him. Um, because again, remember the word he gave me on the first day was that it's in his presence that we're going to hear and that we're going to receive um, the strategies that we need. So we need to ensure that we are practicing and preserving the presence of God um, each and every day so that we can truly um, create the atmosphere. You know, think about um, when you're making that special dinner for you and your spouse or your, your significant other, right? You might have the candles lit and, and the nice soft music playing or whatever you know would create the type of atmosphere that you want to create, right? Um, it's the same thing with us. God, God wants us to make room for him. We can't um, experience him. We can't have um, ex be in his presence when our mind is so filled with other things. We can't um, even experience him in a literally cluttered room when if stuff is all around, it's, it's just it's just too much. You got to make room. You got to make space for him. And so um, I'm so grateful that he reminded us of that on this morning and that he's there to purge and to cleanse us individually and corporately. And then again, the just the blessing of <clears throat> The, the name on the Cipherus meaning bringing profit and useful. Just so excited of how God is um, bringing profit to us um, through this year. We're going to win, right? We're winning the game of 2020. Um, I don't know about you all, but I'm winning. I'm declaring that I am winning the game of 2020. Amen. I am not leaving 2020 the same way I came in. Um, in every area of my life, I am coming up higher in God and I am believing that. And I'm just so excited about what he's doing, but I know he's not just going to do it for me. He's going to do it for you too, because you guys are committed and you are um, hungry and thirsty for God. And he said, when we're hungry and thirsty for him, he will fill us with all righteousness. Amen. All right. Any um, last comments before we pray out? I pray this was a blessing to you guys. Remember, you're, you're, you control what goes on your canvas of life and you control it by what you say out of your mouth in Jesus name. Amen. Jojo says she's winning the game too. I know that's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. God, we're just, we're just in awe of you. We just, we just honor you. We truly reverence you, God. There's none like you in all the earth. Your word is true. There's no error in it. And we just thank you, God. We thank you, Father. You said that if we seek you early, we would find you. And Lord, we made the decision. We chose to seek you early. We chose to, 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 to spend these, these next few days even earlier with you. And each morning you have met us. Each morning we have found you. And each morning you have spoken to us, God. Father, we don't take it for granted that truly you inhabit the praises of your people. Truly you desire to dwell with your people, God. And we thank you for the privilege of being able to enter into your courts with praise and into your thanks, into, into your um, gates with thanksgiving, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us, for your unconditional love for us. We thank you, God, for every... <clears throat> 
intricate detail that pertains to us. Lord, truly, yes, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You, Lord God, you know the very numbers of the hairs on our head. No one knows us more intimately than you, God, and we are forever grateful that we have that intimate relationship with you, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We thank you, God, that you have created us, that you have even given us the free will to create the canvas of our life, God. But we choose to uh, use our free will according to your word and according to your way, God. We choose to paint on the canvas of our life based on the word in these 66 books that you have given us, God. We paint that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We paint that our lines fall to us in pleasant places. We paint that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We paint that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We paint that you always cause us to triumph through Christ Jesus. We, we paint that, that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, all that you are going to do for us, God. We paint that, that men will give into our bosom as we give, pressed down, shaken together and, and running over. We paint, that you, Jehovah Shama, the, the God who is always with us. We paint, Lord God, that you are El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. We paint, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord whose provision is seen. We paint that you are Jehovah Nisi, the God God whose banner is raised over us. We paint that you are Jehovah Shalom, the God of our peace. We paint that you are Jehovah Sikhanu, the God of our righteousness. We paint that you are Elohim, the most high God. We paint that you are Adonai. We paint, Lord God, we paint the very names of God on our canvas so that wherever we go, we are reminded of who you are and that you are there with us, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Oh, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God, that our soul knows well that you do marvelous works. We thank you, God, for your word that says that, that the people that know you will be strong and do exploits because we know you, because we have that intimate relationship with you. We thank you that we are strengthened in our inner man. We thank you, Lord God, that we shall do exploits, that that people will, will, will know that it was only by your grace, but it was by the grace of God that we have accomplished and done all that you have called us to do, God. We thank you, Lord God. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for strengthening those on this live and those that are watching the replay, God. I release your fortitude into them, God. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, you are strengthening the feeble knees, the, the hands that were hanging down. You are strengthening, God. We thank you again for uh, the spirit of Onesiphorus, Lord God, the prophet that is seeking us out, the, the helper, the useful ones that are seeking us out. We thank you for the Aaron and hers that are assigned to us to keep our hands lifted when we grow weary. We thank you, Lord God, for strengthening us in our inner man, in our inner parts, Lord God, that even um, as, the, the, as we would... Um, grow weary, Lord God, with, with the cares of this life. Lord, that we will remember to cast them on you, that our strength would be renewed. You said they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Father, we wait on you. We come asking, how can we serve you? How can we allow your light to be seen in us today? And we thank you that as we do that, we are strengthened, that we will soar. We will mount up with wings as eagles, that we will run and not be weary, that we will walk and not Thank God. We thank you for your divine strength. We thank you for infusing us with your divine strength on today, even as we are 
on the third day of this fast. We thank you. We thank you for the resurrection power that has brought us through even to this third day of this fast, God. We thank you that, that the resurrection power, the same power that, that resurrected Jesus out from the grave, we thank you that those things that we have allowed to die that are meant to live, that the resurrection power on the inside of us is bringing it back to life. We thank you that the dry bones are standing up, that the flesh is coming back upon the dry bones. We speak to the dry bones and we tell them to live. We call upon the breath, the Ruah of God to breathe upon these dry bones. And we say, live, we say, stand. We thank you for the mighty army that is standing up. The mighty army army that is standing up as a result of the resurrection power, as a result of the Ruah of God that is breathing upon every dead situation that is meant to live in our life. The dead marriages is being brought back to life. The dead um, family relationship is being brought back to life. Siblings are, are, are loving each other as siblings should. We thank you, Lord God, the businesses, Lord God, that have suffered in the midst of this pandemic. The Ruah of God is breathing upon them, Lord God, and they are coming back to life. We thank you, Lord God, even for physical bodies that the doctors have counted out, that the Ruah of God is breathing upon them and they are coming back to life. People are coming out of comas. We decree and declare that Miss Marva shall speak, that she shall speak, that her brain will return to proper function, that there will be no uh, negative side effects from, from what she has experienced, but you, she will give a testimony of all testimonies of your goodness and your grace and your mercy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the canvas of life. Thank you that as we remember to paint you on our canvas of life, we will have the perfect painting. We will have the, the um, Michelangelo painting, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for each and every household represented, Lord God. Just continue to cover and shield and protect. Continue to meet every need according to your riches and glory. Continue to allow us to have a divine encounter with you every single day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is good, y'all. Woo, God is good. We give him glory, we give him honor, and we give him praise. So as always, as you all know, we like to um, give someone the opportunity to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you are watching right now, or maybe you're watching the replay, and definitely let me know um, if you're watching the replay so I can just, you know, love on you um, through a comment or or a prayer or whatever. Um, but if you're watching and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Today is a great day to change the canvas of your life. Oh, thank you, Lord. All you have to do is repeat after me and say, Lord God, I am a sinner, but I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died, was buried, and is resurrected. Come into my life as Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. And if you have said that simple prayer, guess what? You have received the greatest gift of all, the gift of life, the gift of eternal life, and the gift of salvation. You just need to find a local church where you can continue to grow and learn the things of God. If you don't know where one is in your area, I can help you. Um, I'll do my best to help you anyway. You can email me at info at robinsmiley.com, or you can simply type in the comments decision and I'll reach out to you that way. You're more than welcome to continue to join us here. We're here every morning, normally 6 a.m., uh, Monday through Friday, and then the weekend, Saturday and Sunday at 7.30. But as we are um, in this week through the um, 
end of this week. As a reminder, guys, we are coming on at 530 to start off with our 30 minutes of prayer um, and fasting as a part of our, our prayer and fasting season. Um, and so for the rest of this week, we'll start at 530 and then next week we'll go back to six o'clock. Um, but again, we're here. We welcome you to continue to join us. You guys have a marvelous Monday. Um, if you like Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, she's on right now. She just came on um, her Power Up Prayer session. Um, so I'll be jumping over to watch that as well. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying. Reverend Stephanie says, Lord, continue to bless your servant. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Sandra says, love that. Today is a great day to change the canvas of your life. Yes, it is. Right? We we, we read in the devotion. We, we can change it. We can change it. We can start over. We can, we can have a do-over. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, we welcome those who have accepted Jesus today. We welcome you. Um, Miss Yvette says, sorry for the late post when you started talking about a prophet looking for us, about the need to share what he shared. Okay. Write down all of your debt down to the last penny. Get the totals and keep it in prayer. Always know your debt when the prophet comes. Amen. I remember someone teaching me that a, a while back as well, that if someone came to you and said, how much money do you owe? You need to know exactly down to the penny because that, you know, is, is they, they may be the one to, to clear all of that debt. Thank you for sharing that. So those of you who uh, may be um, um, in a financial situation where you, um, well, we all have some type of debt, I'm sure. So just let's take heed to what the what the Lord gave our sister to write it down, to be prepared. So when that that prophet comes, right, when the person or the means comes that that can annihilate, eradicate, totally eliminate your debt, you will be able to say, I need the $26,597.22, whatever it is, right? Amen. Thanks for sharing that, event. Thanks for sharing that. Amen. Jojo says amen. All right, guys. I love you. Have a marvelous, magnificent, manifold Monday. And I will see you all tomorrow at 530. <laughs> 530. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.